is a fracture that affected the for how long? It's for, for 15 years now. For what? 15 years. 15 years? Yes, sir. Oh, Jesus Christ. You are from where? I'm from Saminaka. You travel from Saminaka? Yes, sir. For this meeting? Yes, sir. I and was invited by, by somebody. To be healed? Yes. Do you want to be healed right now? Yes, sir. Come and hold the microphone. The Lord is going to heal you right now. God is going to replace everything in your neck. And the problem in the neck will be corrected right now. The fraction, the problem, the difficulties will be removed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus has healed you. Take it with it. In. Take it. Take it. Move the color. Jesus has healed you. Move the neck. Move the neck. Move the neck. Move the neck. Move it. Move it. Move it. Jesus, who did you say invited you from this place? To God has done for me, oh. He has taken away my sorrow when I was free. And I got my Lord for him. I got my para, hallelujah, para, hey. Come on. Because of Jesus, every day I shakara they do. Double, double, heavenly blessings that he may receive. Ah, yeah. ah, ah, ah. Lord of the rest of us is always the fall of me. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. God has given the victory. Ah, yeah. God has given the victory. He has given us victory. Ah, yeah. For him. Hey. What happened now? Praise the Lord. This brother came in for this great program, IGC 2021. For the past 15 years, he has been using neck lumbar. Brother said before he could not twist the neck this way. But he now could, he couldn't twist his neck. He couldn't move his he couldn't move the neck. He has to stay one place. But now, the power of now Jesus Ted, you brought happened. you brought him, right? Tell us what happened. Myself and my husband brought him. He's our neighbor's elder brother. Apart from the neck, he, he was a man that was working for God. He had a vision to teach children how to recite the Bible. When he started that years ago, the devil afflicted him. From neck to kidney to liver, different sickness. As I'm speaking to you, they afflict him. They afflict his daughter that is about 18 years. We told him that the brother, that you should tell him to come for the program. My husband sent him transport. He has a lot of schools, but since the affliction, he just collects money from the school to treat himself. From one sickness to the other. From one hospital to the other. But we told him, come. God is going to use our man of God to heal him. And here is it. We are happy. We are happy. We are happy. So before you couldn't move your neck. Put, put the microphone. You couldn't move your neck. Before it's difficult for me to move. My it's neck. difficult for you to move yes, your neck. Yes. Now move it everywhere so that the devil will see that the devil has been defeated. Jesus! He said he could not move the neck. 
It's always when that's why you have been wearing this place to put the neck in one play position. Listen to me. The devil is a liar. Thank you, Jesus. I give you praise. 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 In Jesus' name. From today, the affliction the devil has put upon his life is terminated. I am the Lord that healed thee. Now, because it's good for you to be healed emotionally, healed physically, and also healed spiritually. When somebody is sick spiritually, he will be filled with sadness of heart. He will be filled with sin. And he will not be able to coordinate his life. The other time somebody told me that he, um, something entered her and she, she was just watching a kind of a movie and something came out from the screen and entered her. And after that day, that person who entered her started com commanding her to do things she wouldn't want to do. And she wouldn't want to tell anybody until she has to make a you know, confession because it was getting her out of her mind. And she was prayed for and she regained herself. So, you see, she is spiritually sick. When someone is living in sin and finding it difficult to quit from such habit, the person is spiritually sick. Like you see some people who are habitual uh, drunk and, and they just keep drinking. They, they habitually go to clubhouse and stay till 12 midnight, 1 p.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m. in the night. And you ask them, why are you doing that? They don't see anything wrong with it. They just feel, well, it's part of life. They have to go. They don't see anything wrong. They don't see the risk. They don't see the danger of them take, being drunk, taking some hard drugs and all that. They don't see any reason. So they feel that that's the way of life. You know, some people can even go on the street half naked and they don't even see, think anything is wrong with that. You see, something is wrong with their mind. So they are sick, so they need their healing. And look at um, um, the other time someone said he has affection, but he has affection towards sleeping with animals. This is not normal. Sleeping with animal. And you can even, the other time, somebody uh, pregnant a, uh, a mental woman, you know, who is really men mental on the street. And a human being did that to her. And this is not normal. They know something would de destroy their lives, but they can't stop it. They don't have the power to stop it. So they are actually sick. And they are, some people are sick emotionally and spiritually. Emotional sickness you know, see somebody uh, cannot control his or her temper. And, and I mean, get angry. When you get angry, they can burn the whole house down. When something happens, a little thing like that can spark out, spark out offense. They know what is right, but they don't know how to go about it. I remember just recently, two people were uh, talking. Two friends were just discussing with each other. He said, oh, is it how you dress to, um, to church? And the other ones they, they, they ignored the message. He said, oh, again, do you, is that how you dress to church? I ignored the message. The, best, the next thing they said, ah, if that is how you dress to church, it is not a good way. That is a bad way of dressing to church. They didn't spark up fire between these two couples or these two ladies, this lady and this young man. And they think caused a big problem between two of them. They all fought, and I think they almost divorced. If not, yeah, maybe if they if they had reconciled themselves together, maybe they have reconciled. But that that would be that would be troublesome. That means there's something in one of them that is maybe the woman who simply oh no, Dali, that is not how I dressed. I you know you know I should, you don't expect me to dress that way now. And that is all. But her action now brought out 
a, a, a trouble. She now said, how would you expect ask that question from me? It's offensive. It's annoying. And you see, this is something that would have, I mean, be solved with a little bit answer. Oh, yeah, that's not why, why that's not how I dress to church. And I just dress that way, snap pictures, send it to you as a husband and wife. That is all. Uh, but then that would have solved the problem. You know, but then small things like that has caused people, husband and wife, to divorce. There are someone who someone who, who divorced the wife just because of mere toothpaste. It becomes a problem. You ought to press the toothpaste from this way. Why are you pressing the toothpaste from the center? That is where it become a problem. And two of them fought. And before you know, the marriage packed up. So, see, what happened? That is called sickness of each type, of a different type, emotional sickness. Some people are um, um, sick in such a way they are craving for something, craving for to, to do an inordinate affection stuff, you know, crazy, you know. They have urge for immorality. They, they can go out and hunt for a girl, hunt for a man just to satisfy themselves. They, they can't control them, their emotion and their feeling. They are sick and they needed God's healing. I'm talking about I am the Lord, I heal thee. Where did this come from? It came from the book of Exodus. When God was dealing with his children and there were problems here and then, there were sickness, there were things that had to do with um, uh, the sap, uh, serpent biting people. And I mean, God had to set up, tell Moses, put a bruising serpent. And when they look, they will be healed. Can you imagine that if a bruising serpent could be kept on a tree, you know, which is a type of uh, the cross of Jesus Christ, and a bruising serpent was kept on the tree, don't forget it's the serpent that deceived, um, deceived uh, um, Adam and Eve, and they fell. And they now looked. If looking at a bruising serpent on the cross, and it brought healing to the people of Israel, just looking. Do you know what happened? If you look at Jesus, sure, you will be healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. All you have to do is to look at Jesus. If you look, you will be healed. You will be saved. You will be delivered. So when God uh, took his people across the wilderness, about 4 million people, they were healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, that was where God introduced himself to the people of God. He said, I am, I am the Lord that he led thee. And he introduced himself, I am the Lord. Do you know, I'm the Lord that saved you. I'm the Lord that can protect you. I'm the Lord that can give you health, wealth, prosperity. I'm the Lord that can deliver you. Now, deliver you from the attack of the enemy. Deliver you from evil frustration. Sometimes many people don't know the direction they should take in life, whether they should go to the left or go to the right. But you know what? I'm, God is our guide. God is our, is our protector. God the one who can lead us. Now, can you imagine if you are lost in the wilderness? You don't have your way back home. You can imagine how you will suffer. You will be in problems. You will be in difficulties. Now, but then, if you have your direction back home and you know what exactly what to do, your future become better. Now, I want to let you know, especially young boys and young girls, if at this age you miss your direction and by the time you try to trace your way back, you've gone. Yes, husband, you've missed your way. You've missed your way. And that's why now you need God's direction. You need direction on who to get married. You don't just jump into marriage because you're of age, so you must get into marriage. Ah, no, my age is passing me. Then let me just jump into marriage. You know, you don't jump into marriage that way. You don't just go into marriage because, oh, people are putting the pressure on you that you must get married to this girl or get married to that boy. Or you must change the city where you're living with. You, you, you can change Change the city. But if God did not send you to the new place, you are going to. You are your own. Yes, you are your own. If God did not open the door for you and you forced the door to be open, you are your own. It's going to bring problems. 
Now, one thing I know is that if you live a prayer life and you serve God, and the, God is your healer, God is your protector, whatever happens to you in life is under God's protection, under God's guidance. If you make mistakes, those mistakes are going to bring testimony to you. Just like you see um, um, J- Joseph. Joseph was sold as a slave. That was a big mistake they made against him. It looked like so painful. Then eventually he went to prison. It was so painful and a bad experience. But you know, those bad experiences were the one that made way for him to become the prime minister. So if you are in God and you follow God's will, you follow God's direction, you, you are in the center of God's plan, you pray daily, you go to church, you serve God honestly, and you look unto heaven, Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of your life. Do you know what happened? When unpleasant things happen to you, surely they must be a way out. And not only that, they all will turn for your good. It will turn to your blessings. Now, I'm not talking about sickness, for example. Now, you can see some people say, well, pastor, sickness is the will of God. God brought this sickness on my life to teach me a lesson. No, no, no. Sickness cannot be a way to teach you. You know, will you use, uh, will you call your enemy to beat your own child when your child did something that is wrong? No, 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 no. God never used sicknesses. God never used de- devil or demon to torment his own children. It never. Now, what am I bringing out? I want to let you understand that God wants you well. God wants to save you. If you are sick, God wants to deliver you. If you are afflicted, God wants to set you free from the affliction. If you are under torment by evil spirit, or satanic spirit, it is the will of God to set you free from evil spirit and evil torment. If your mind is confused, you don't know where to go, you don't know the direction to take. Friends, take note of me. God wants to give you a direction and organize your life. Many people today see some young boys and young girls of 30 years old, you know, they feel disorganized. You know, so disorganized that some of them have touched money, but discover money has not solved the issue. Some of them could look flashy, look good, good girl, you know, good boys. I mean, they look nice, walk in a good place, wear good dress. I mean, things like that. But you know, they, what they are passing through in the inside of them is what they cannot be, they cannot carry, they cannot lift out. If money is the solution to their need, they will have used the whole money to buy what they need. They, 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 they have so much confusion in the inside. They are not, no, no more peace, no joy, no happiness. The things are being weighed down in their life and they are passing through some hell, which God did not want them to go through. Lord said, put your body upon the Lord. Cast your yoke upon the Lord. Put your trust upon the Lord. He will take you from there. I mean, take control of you. So as long as there is doubt in your mind, you can't go further in the healing plan of God. You can't be emotionally healed. You can't be spiritually healed. You can't, you can't be physically healed. So long there is doubt. You must be fully convinced that God wants to save me. And I'm a child of God. You must be fully convinced that God loves me. If not, you can receive that love. You can enjoy what love is actually talking about. You have to be convinced that God loves you. You have to be convinced that God wants you well. You have to be convinced that God wants you to get sound mind. And God wants you to, uh, to enjoy your life, to be prosperous. That conviction will attract the message of God towards you. Friend, I, I want you to take note of this, please. Don't misunderstand me. Are there people that will suffer? Are there people that will be sick? Of course, there will be people that are sick, but it's those who do not understand the word of God. Those who do not take the word of God serious. Those who don't believe in the truth of God's word. Because some people still feel that God uses sickness to punish or to teach, it, teach, a, teach us a lesson, which is not true. 
Some people think that, oh, this sickness is well, it's from the devil. I will be it's my cross, I will be it. No, that's not true. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be anything. You, it, it, it shouldn't be it. The sickness is supposed, supposed to be on Jesus, not on you. So there's no reason why you should be sick. There's no reason why you should be sick. Whether in your mind, in your thought, in your spirit, in your soul, no. There's no reason why you should live in sin. Because sin is sickness, spiritual sickness. It's a very deadly sickness, sin. Hallelujah. But then, how can you go out of this? One thing I want you to know is that everything comes by faith. If you must make God happy, the only thing that can make God happy in your life, not by works, not by doing good stuff, not by going doing things that will make your pastor happy or your, your friends happy, not by doing something that people will say, oh, this lady is trying, this girl is trying, this sister is trying. Those are good. They are the back up to it because faith without works is dead. So faith has to come and those things have to back up the faith. So the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For they that come to God must believe that he is and that is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. So if you want to please God, friend, all you have to do is to knock out every doubtful spirit from you. If you want to live in righteousness, you have to knock out every doubtful spirit. If you want to live a clean life, you want to be a clean girl, you want to be a clean woman, you want to be a clean boy, all you have to do is to have the faith of God. Now, look at what happened. Rahab was a prostitute, professional prostitute, registered prostitute. But do you know what happened? When something happened, the children of Israel sent spies into, the, into Jericho and they were to kill the spies, the children of Israel. And this prostitute was the only one who took those spies and hid them. Hid them in, in her room. Cover it up. Make it up. That they were not killed. And eventually, she has confidence in the God that sent this spy down. He knew, she knew that somehow this God that sent this spy down that send the spider must be greater than the God they knew, even though she is a prostitute. Then she used her opportunity to strike a deal. She entered a covenant with these people. Look, you are coming. You can't kill. I'm hiding you. I hid you. And you did not, you did not die. And you are going over now. You must protect me and my children. And she trusted in the God of this spice, the God of Israel. Do you know what happened? She was saved. Her faith brought salvation. That was why her name was really in the, among the greatest women of faith in the Bible. In Hebrews chapter 11. She was delivered and her, she was saved and her household. And she became the great grandmother of Jesus. Of David and of Jesus. Can you imagine that kind of a thing? Now, what has that got to teach you? That what it teaches me, and you should understand. What it taught me is this. Have faith in the things of God and protect the cause of the gospel. Protect the cause. She protected these two Israelites. Have you made time to protect the children of God? Have you made time to protect the pastors that are working with you? Do you know if you protect them and you, you key to their God, just like, you know, what... Ruth said, say, your God will be my God. Where you die is where I will die. You know, that was what he told Naomi. He said, your God will be my God. I will follow your God. Now, have you been able to know that there's, there's someone around you who God is with? Do you, do you have you been able to know your pastor is someone who God is with? Have you been able to detect, understand that I, I am the one talking to you now? 
I'm like a spy to you. God knows. Have you been able to understand that I can be a blessing to your life? And have you been able to realize that, that God can use me to bring healing to your life? Healing to your life. It is that faith that I have, the prostitute had. And he was able to understand this spice. And from this spice, she got her deliverance. So I believe that right now, you can get your deliverance if you believe in the God who sent me to you to give you this message. By faith, you can be saved. By faith, you can be delivered. And you can please God from the whole of your heart if you trust him, if you receive him as your savior and as your healer and as your prosperity. Do you know that God will give you the prosperity you're looking for? God will give you the blessing you're looking for. But then you must ask in faith, not in doubt. Faith is very, very important. When you have faith in with God, then you begin to see the great things God is doing or is going to do for your life. I want to pray for you very soon, but just know that God wants you well and it's your duty to claim your healing. Why must I suffer the sickness my father suffered? Why must I suffer the sickness my mother suffered? No, it's not the will of God for me to suffer what inheritance. No, I, I, you, should be, you should come out of it. I believe in divine help, man. I believe in praying for the sick and they get healed. I believe in deliverance from poverty and deliverance from sin and sicknesses because that is why Jesus came. The Bible says he took away all our infirmities, took away all our disease, took away, took away all our affliction and he put it upon him. And that is why I can't be sick any longer. No pain should reign or dominate over my body, not even in my heart. Not even in my bone, not even in my in my leg, in my head. It shouldn't be. So, friends, I declare today, wherever you are, let the power of God hit you and be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. And wherever you're listening to this broadcast, whether in the street, in the car, I pronounce protection upon you. I pronounce victory upon you. This is why Jesus came. He came to save the sinner. And to heal those who are afflicted, I pronounce the very work of Christ walk in your heart that you'll be saved. You'll be spiritually saved from sickness, spiritual sickness, which is sin, and be born again. And also be saved from bodily, emotional, spiritual, and physical sickness in Jesus' name. I declare you healed. And I declare you free right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <music>